Welcome to More Than a Song, where you get a chance to experience great music in an intimate concert setting. I'm Denise Graves, and today we'll feature Stacy Furness. For as long as the singer-songwriter can remember, music has been her saving grace. A lifelong love of words and music has led Stacy to cultivate songs and stories into something strong and beautiful and brave. Let's take a listen.
Stacy Furness is a UC Berkeley graduate, mom, and former English teacher who has enjoyed successes she hasn't dared to dream. Her acoustic pop folk songs have reached millions of viewers on major network shows, as well as concert venues across the country. Terry Black recently explored her new project, Unpathed Waters, Undreamed Shores. My friends, I want to have you meet Stacy Frenis. She is a storyteller extraordinaire. And you know how she used her stories? By music. Stacy, so glad to have you with us. Thank you so much. Good to be here. Good. I'm so glad. Now, start off by telling a little bit about yourself. Sure. I So I am actually live in the San Francisco Bay Area. Okay. And I have a husband named Abe and two kids, Abby and Zach. And um, I grew up really being a lover of words and music. When I was a little girl, I just, you know, my mom used to, to kind of uh, she'd clean house on Saturday mornings, and the way I would I would be occupied is she would just have to put a couple albums on the record player, oh my goodness. and I would sit and listen to music for hours. I loved music, wow. and I started writing poems and essays, and I wrote a whole novel in the third grade <laughs> <laughs> because I loved okay. words and music, and then. Um, Right around the age of 12, I actually, I met the Lord. I was introduced to um, uh, the Lord at, an inter at a summer camp, and um, yeah, I gave my heart to Jesus. And, and at, from that pivotal point, mm -hmm. I began actually writing songs because the, the words on the page seemed to kind of float up and want to have melodies, and I was hearing these melodies in my head. And really, it was all about this new life that was starting inside of me. And I wanted to think about it, process it, write about it, and that's how it came out of me, was just in, in songs. That is that is so incredible that your songs that you sang, or wrote, and you sing, mm -hmm. they came from inspiration that God put in you Absolutely. I, I think it's just, you know, once you're in filled with the Holy Spirit, as, mm -hmm. as a brand new believer, especially as a young girl, there was just um, so much work going on and so much new life and new truths and new revelations coming into my heart. Mm -hmm. And those things were exciting to me. And mm -hmm. so, and just wanting to kind of praise him in, in song as well. And so all of the thoughts I had and all the questions and all the dreams and all the hopes came out as songs, you know? Well, that's something I'm so curious about because I'm not a songwriter. Mm -hmm. And so did you find that you had uh, song lyrics when you went through bad experiences that God pulled you through or was it in the quiet times? How did, how did music come about for you? You know, it's funny, they, they say that mm -hmm. dark times and hard times is, is really fertile for, those are real fertile for creativity, and I can attest to that. It seems okay. like when I'm struggling the most to find a purpose, to find a mm -hmm. meaning, to find God in the darkness, that's when I tend to create. That's when I okay. write songs. And it's almost as though the creating itself, the writing, is a search for answers. Mm. You know, a search for peace, mm -hmm. a search for... Oh, some kind of uh, way to explain it. You know, okay. how I look at it is, you think about Genesis, how God created out of the chaos. He made shapes mm. and forms out of nothing. And I think point. that's what songs are for mm. me. They're a way to kind of take the chaos and shape them into something hopefully beautiful. Oh my gosh, they are. Your songs are, they all have messages. It's like a story, but they inspire. And your mm. voice is so beautiful. It's just so easy to listen to. Oh, thank you so much. It thank really you. is. What a gift. 
gift you have. And and when you have written countless songs, I bet you've written what thousands? Uh, uh, yeah, easily. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And you know, and I just want folks to know too that your songs, they all have a spiritual foundation, but they have found their way in secular world, haven't they? They have. They have. Yes. I've been working for years with an agent in L.A. and then one in Seattle who pitches songs to film and TV and um, and so a lot of times um, music that I'm writing from a deeply spiritual place in my life mm -hmm. ends up on say a soap opera or right. ends up on you know a, the biggest loser my, or one of my favorite your, shows <laughs> <laughs> or America's Next Top Model or you know just shows yes. that you'd never associate with with spiritual themes, mm -hmm. but I, I just think it's kind of a beautiful way that art has a way of speaking a universal language, and then even yeah. deeper than that, the Holy Spirit speaks, and oh, even more. Oh, yes. I'm sure that the Holy Spirit is speaking through all those shows that use your songs. Wouldn't you, I mean, it makes sense. Absolutely. It's yeah, ways that go beyond our, our imagination. Don't they? That's how mm -hmm. I think of it, too. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Well, I have another question for you, too, and it's about your God moments when you write songs. Mm -hmm. Is there like a certain story where you're like, this is really a God song? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, there's a song that I, I wrote for the last album that I recorded <laughs> called Everything You Love Comes Alive, and it came out of, you know, it's funny, from that title, you would mm -hmm. think, oh, it must have been during a time you were really flourishing and everything <laughs> was sprouting up in your life, and it was the exact opposite. It was a time of very... Um, barren, desolate time in my creative life and in my emotional mm. life, my spiritual life. Um, kind of what we got hit with one storm after another. We had lost our home and the housing market crashed. Oh my. And my dad passed away yeah. and then my, my brother passed away very suddenly after that and we're a close family. So it was just one truly um, d d hard change after yes. another. And I found myself not wanting to pick up the guitar, not wanting to write because it was too painful to kind of dig into that, those places and, mm. and think about them right. and write about them. But I can remember one day after it, was, it had been months that I hadn't mm -hmm. played guitar or sung and I, I, I didn't even recognize how much I'd missed it. And I picked it up and just started strumming a little bit. and. Mm -hmm. um, I got a couple of lines about how God's love is liquid and how it goes into those deep, hard to reach mm -hmm. places and how it, it starts nurturing like sunlight and like soil and air and all the things that we need to grow. And that as I sang that song, that song itself became a gift to me. Mm -hmm. And I realized that, you know, our gifts, that when God gives us certain talents and gifts and we express those, it's not always just I mean, I know it's for others and for their joy and service, but a lot of times it's just for us. It heals us to oh, do what yes. we love. Mm -hmm. And that song um, was definitely a God moment of him saying back, giving back to me my gift and saying, use it and, and mm -hmm. you know, work through that and just know that because I love you, everything I love, the Lord was saying, comes alive again. You oh, know, it's wow. that resurrection power. And so your songs, they definitely are more than a song. I mean, yeah that your message is not only for yourself, for so many that, that are just inspired by it. Yeah, and it's so amazing to me how I'll be going through something in my life and write mm -hmm. this very deeply personal song, mm -hmm. and I'll share it with people, and they'll say, oh, I, I, that, I listened to that song all through my, you know, fill in the blank, right. like my divorce, or when my child had gone away to college and I was mm -hmm. lonely, and um, these different situations where the song somehow finds a way to just you know, fill that space. And that's just, that's God. That's the Holy Spirit. It really you is. Know. And, it's, and it shows, too, of your obedience to God's calling in your life. Mm. You mentioned about that you saw this as a gift, mm. but it wasn't something that you have kept for yourself. How did you make that change from the gift to keep to yourself for allowing God to use it? Yeah, that's a good question. And it didn't come easily. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that those of us who are I mean, all of us, when we're gifted, in the area of our gift, we tend to, I think, have a certain agenda along with that gift. And yeah. we think, well, what I'd really like is to be successful in this arena mm -hmm. and to and to make it, you know, big time in this area. And right. certainly I did, too. I mean, as a teenager, I wanted to be a big, you know, Christian rock star <laughs> and play big arenas and travel yeah. around. And, but... It, that wasn't my journey. That wasn't my path. And um, so I think what happens in my case anyway is just, you know, you have these you have these situations where the Lord takes you through something where you realize it's not really about your agenda. And mm -hmm. you see, you know, people will come up to me afterwards and say, Stacy, your song saved me through this time in my mm -hmm. life. And 
you begin to see those as much bigger rewards than mm -hmm. the original agenda. Yes. Um, and mm -hmm. you kind of start comparing those and saying, well, of course, it's about God's planting and what he sows and what he, um, the harvest that he can bring out of what we sow right. is eternal. And that's the harvest right. that we reap is, is just temporal. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one of the lifelong lessons I keep learning with this gift, for sure. Amen. Well, you know, thank you for sharing your gift. It's a joy and it's an inspiration to all of us. Thank you. Nothing was impossible Anywhere you 
future felt like Every day another new surprise You saw the world with a wonder in your eyes Oh, it's never too late for a dreamer To find the heart of a child again Open up your window, feel the wind Imagine other oceans on dream shores Father star Thank you for joining us for more than a song. We would love to hear from you. Contact us at family at ctvn.org or call us and we will pray with you for the Holy Spirit to move on your behalf. Until next time, keep looking for the message behind the music and listen for the new song he sings over you. I'm Denise Graves and I'll see you next week.